First of all, before I begin uh, elaborating, like Christians and pagans, like we're all true friends here, we're all brothers, and against degeneracy we are all friends. Like I'm not baptized, I have never had any connection with the church, but that said, like I still have very good uh, friends that are Christians around the world and I have nothing but respect for them, uh, but I have never had any personal connection with the church. However, I still have... like the hammer and the cross to signify the the unity like for me Christianity is a whole European thing and I think it's a great you know glue for the European world and the Western world. Nationalism is raising its head again in the political sphere. I, uh, I caught this video of the golden one the other day and uh, it kind of struck home with me because I remember uh, Romans 9 where Paul starts talking about how he wished he could be accursed for the sake of his own people, the Jews, in the sense that there were a lot of Jews who refused to accept Gentile believers, even as Christians. And of course Paul goes on to be considered the so-called apostle to the Gentiles, and he's the one that's kind of responsible for uh, so many white people <laughs> being Christian, among other colors of people. Uh, nationalism by itself is not a bad thing, it's actually an expansion of inclusion. It's not, it's not inherently racist, but it keeps becoming racist. And there's a reason for that. And I want to expand on it because you see here he's talking about being a pagan and a Christian at the same time, having sympathies with these things. But I want you to see what he means by pagan. There's another video of him. Take a look at this. Taking it upon himself to represent my gods. And when I say gods, it's not some some sort of spirituality it's about ways of life teaches so if you look at this hammer right here it does not signify that thunder comes from thor in his wagon no this signifies masculinity and strength that is what that is about now i don't want to go too far overboard on this guy because he's actually a pretty smart guy fun to watch but i'm just saying paganism in his worldview is actually very closely related to atheism. This is not a guy who believes in the ancient gods. He believes in the ideals behind the ancient gods. And this is not new. Many of the ancients themselves looked at the gods in this light. Atheism is not new. Atheism is not new, folks. It's old, and it's always been a problem. Now, now, I don't want to go too far off into the religious aspects of this because I want to talk about nationalism as it pertains to atheism. And so watch this. Watch where it goes next. I have read Suprahumanism, courtesy of Arctos. Link is in the description. So it goes. Suprahumanism does not reproach Christianity for defending the weak or unjustly oppressed. It reproaches Christianity for exalting weakness and viewing it as a sign of election and a title of glory. It reproaches Christianity for not helping the weak to become strong. It is not a matter of opposing the strong against the weak, but rather of opposing a system that values strength against a system that values weakness. The West faces massive third world immigration, and high fertility rates combined with a below replacement white birth rates. And it is guilt about the third world which is primarily cause of massive immigration into western lands. Christian ethics, weak and meek, protects the other and opposes the powerful. It is a morality of self-sacrifice, rooted in the idea that we are, ourselves are the first sinners. Religious as well as secular Christians walk through life mired in feelings of guilt. Religious Christians have Christ. He made the ultimate self-sacrifice for all mankind in dying on the cross. And he forgives us for being unable to live up to his example. Secular Christians, however, have no options other than to perform a Christ-like sac self-sacrifice themselves. Western civilization's theology stipulates that the more pity you show, the holier you are. Pity the weak, the non-whites, and fight the powerful, the whites because they are evil. To atone for our sins, we must deny ourselves. European nationalism is wrong, European ethnic pride is evil. Hence, we must sacrifice ourselves on the cross of multiculturalism. Pitying them, we allow hordes of non-whites to flood Europe and America. 
almost too many things to cover wrong with that from my viewpoint, but the first one I'd just like to say is this idea of a secular Christian. There is no secular Christian. Those people are called atheists. Secondly, the guy just got through, if you watch his original video, and I'll put a link in the comments section, just got through talking about the difference between confidence and arrogance. And then he turns around and says, meekness and weakness are about Christianity. No, Christianity is about meekness. That is to say, not being arrogant, which is exactly what he was talking about earlier. So how I missed that, I don't know. Uh, Let's talk about politics and where this is coming from and why I'm interested in it, because the rise of nationalism is feared because of the nationalist socialists. Well, they're socialists. Socialists. Nationalism, as an aspect of socialism, can create problems. But note that the Soviet Union was an internationalist socialist country, and they still committed genocides and had all sorts of problems. And atheists are, oh, well, that's not really... Yes, it's really atheism. Yes, I know, it's not the only kind of atheism, but the only kinds we have are the kinds that we have. If you want an atheism, if you want a so-called secular Christian, you're going to have to have atheists stop glomming on to Christianity. And there's some out there, and they're making their little waves, but they can't come up with a unified set of values. And folks... That's the issue. Pagan genocide was the norm back in the day. Uh, one of the first ones I bumped into was the Roman genocide of northern uh, Celtic people in the peninsula, the Italian peninsula. Uh, these are the Celts that you always read about. That they were naked, tattooed barbarians, and they'd slick their hair back with lime, and they would get an erection and charge naked into battle. <laughs> and it worked for him. It was, a, it was an early form of psychological warfare, and it worked for him until the Romans figured out how to put a shield wall, and you stick a spear through the shield wall, then they could kill dies. And, and there's even a wonderful uh, statue called the Dying Kilt. Uh, different region, different situation, same Celts. <laughs> same Celts, yeah. Uh, of course, the obsession with nude statues in the pagan world, whatever. Point being, genocide is the norm. Genocide is the norm in pagan societies. You kill people in order to dominate them. The last pagan Roman emperor, the apostate, what's his name? Julian the apostate, upset with Christians because they're appealing to the pagans and drawing them away from paganism with their kindness meekness. Not weakness, meekness. Those values are what united Europe. Those values are what defended Europe from Islam, which is now coming back, and the atheists can't find any way to simultaneously unite us and defend us, because they can't unify around a system of values. If you listen to the Golden One's value statements here, and you've read Mein Kampf, you can see how it leads inexorably to these kinds of conflicts. Uh, what's the difference? The Judeo-Christian ethic, you will say, has its own genocides, especially like Jewish genocide of the Canaanites. Well, the Canaanites were bad foes. And we have the archaeology now to show us, and all of that it, it pertains to child sacrifice, literal child sacrifice, uh, warlike ways. Um, so the Jews come out, and, and many people deny that the Jews came out of, of Egypt. Whatever. The point is, they show up in this region, they become an identifiable, identifiable group of people, and they have an identifiable set of values that is at odds with the pagan values of the time. Uh, Ruth and Rahab were women who were from outside, and they were accepted into the culture when they abandoned the ancient values. Men, even under Judaism, could come from the outside, be circumcised, and become Jews if they accepted the values. Um, even if you didn't do that, if you were an outsider in Judea, under the ancient Judean code, you must be treated fairly because those are our Jewish values. We treat everyone Fairly. That's not weakness. That's what allows us to get along and cooperate. And cooperation is strength. Cooperation is where it comes from. 
I don't care how big and buff you are, you're not going to beat up 150 people. Unless God lets you. <laughs> All right? In which case, again, God blesses those who share his values. So, you know, at the end of it, we see Christ taking even the last vestiges of a cultural requirement out of it. You don't have to be Jewish. You don't have to do the sacrifices. You don't have to be circumcised. But what stays? It's the values. The values stay. It's about values, people. We're to the point now where we're literally going to die if we don't get that science does not do away with values. Okay? We're going to do away with values because science? No. Because science, we have light bulbs. Because of Christianity, we have good values. I defy atheists to come up with a good value system. I think what you're going to find, if you really look into ethics, the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, it's Christian at its root. Oh, well, there's a Babylon. No, no. <laughs> you look at it closely, it's Christian at its root. It's Judeo-Christian. Um, love your enemy, eh? Love your enemy. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, values. You're not going to get that stuttering the dirt that makes up the cells of your brain. It comes from Christ. It comes from the Lord God Almighty. You're going to need to get back to values. And I hope you do. Thanks for watching. Thanks again for watching Christian Labor. Please like, subscribe, comment, click on an ad, or donate from the banner of our YouTube homepage. Thank you very much.